Welcome, everybody, to the August Monthly Market Insight. Uh, a lot of volatility today in the market, uh, and really over the last week or so, so we'll make sure we talk about that and kind of the reasons behind it. So what we saw was the Fed met on July 30th and 31st, and when they gave their remarks on July 31st, they said they were going to leave interest rates where they're at, and that's at about 5.2 to 5.5%. Um, following that, we get the unemployment numbers on the first Friday of every month. So we got those on August 2nd, uh, last Friday, and we saw unemployment went up. And what we've been talking about really over the last year is the markets are going to move based on what's happening with the unemployment number and what's happening with the inflation number. And our monthly market insights have kind of been on repeat for a while because those are the two numbers that we watch most closely. And um, obviously, when the Fed you know, talks about every two months, we get that insight as well. And so when the Fed said that they were going to hold the rates the same, the market said, OK, well, maybe they're still a little bit optimistic. But the, but the market was pricing in that they were probably going to drop the rates, and they didn't. Um, and then when we get the Friday unemployment number, we saw unemployment go up from 4.1 to 4.3%. And really, this whole year, we've been saying if we get around that 4.2, 4.3% number, I think the markets could get a little scared, and that would be a good sign for the Fed to roll back interest rates. So because they gave their meeting you know, a couple of days prior, and then we get the unemployment number, they left them where they're at. Uh, and so the market is saying, hey, the Fed's late to roll back interest rates. We're starting to see some pain in the economy. We're starting to see that unemployment number rise. Again, 4.3% isn't a high unemployment number, but it's higher than that kind of that 3.4 to 3.7 range that it's been moving ever since you know COVID happened. And really 2022, when we saw that rapid interest rate increase, we saw inflation going up. We continue to have low unemployment. Again, that 3.4 to 3.7 number. And as inflation's come down, right, it's now floating around 3.0% uh, based on July's data. We said, all right, inflation's coming down, unemployment going up, probably makes sense for the Fed to lower rates, and they didn't. Now, the Fed was late to raise rates, and it looks like they're going to be late to lower rates. Um, so the market is kind of experiencing some of that pain. It was probably pricing in that the Fed was going to lower rates, and they didn't. So we're not going to get our next Fed announcement until September 18th, uh, 19th, the Fed will meet again. And that will be kind of the next time we get some interesting information on when the Fed lowers rates. And if we kind of go back to their previous meeting uh, before July, they said, all right, we'll probably do one interest rate reduction in 2024. Now that we see unemployment rising, we'll get an idea of what happens with inflation next week. Maybe they'll say, all right, we'll do a couple interest rate reductions. And we can see the market kind of bounce back. Uh, but we've seen uh, a pretty large pullback from the S&P 500. Again, it opened up down about 2.5% today on August 5th, after closing about 2.5% down on Friday. So the market is kind of trending down, saying, hey, the Fed probably should have lowered rates. We were pricing that in, and it didn't happen. So how long will that last? And ultimately, will the Fed have uh, kind of an off-rate or an off-schedule uh, meeting where they'll say, all right, you know what? We see the unemployment rising. We see the market pull back. We'll get next, uh, or we'll get July's, inflation number next week. Maybe to see that data if it drops in the twos and they'll they'll do something before September. But those are all things that we just don't know they're going to happen. All that being said, the market is still up for the year, uh, right, right around nine and a half, 10 percent, uh, really kind of going into today. But we're seeing a large pullback. So people are asking us, what are we going to do? What, what, what do we do at this point? And we say we're going to buy, right? We like to buy when things are down. Um, we know that there's going to be interest rate reductions in the future. We don't know when. But now that we see a pullback of near 10% uh, over the, the, the previous market high, it's a good opportunity to buy. So things that we'll be doing, we'll be making investments, investing some of that cash, buying the discount because we're long-term investors. And we believe that in the, in the future, the market will be positive. So we're not going to make any drastic changes. Uh, no one's running to cash, right? Those are the kind of things that could really hurt the portfolio, trying to time the market. We're going to say, all right, we've got a discounted market. We're long-term investors. We believe the Fed's going to lower rates in, in kind of the near-term future. Let's go ahead and buy the discount so that when it comes back, that we reap the rewards. Um, so that's kind of a lot of what's been going on in the market. And really, if you've been paying attention to any of these 
uh, monthly market insight videos for the last uh, really 18 months. This has been the story, right? Waiting for unemployment to rise. The Fed was raising interest rates, trying to get unemployment to rise. Now we're seeing unemployment rise. We're seeing inflation come down. Does that trend continue this month? And those will be kind of the, the big market movers in what we see. Uh, again, right, we did our, our, our election special last month where we said, hey, there's a lot of volatility, a lot of noise that's happening around the election. What happens if? And again, those are games we don't play. We showed you some data that show that in the long term, we don't really care who's in office, what the makeup of Congress is. Companies are going to be more efficient than the government, and they're going to find a way to provide value to their shareholders regardless. So a lot of volatility, and this is what we've been talking about. We expect a lot of volatility over the summer months as we get unemployment to rise, inflation to come down, we get the election in there. But all in all, right, we still see strong signs in the economy. We still see, see people out there spending money, and, and that's gonna be what's going to make the economy churn. So uh, we'll continue to monitor. Right, right now, we're going to get cash invested. We like buying things when they're discounted because uh, we're long-term investors. And then we'll continue to watch the data as it comes out uh, next week with unemployment. And then obviously next month's, in, uh, I'm sorry, next week's inflation number. And then early uh, September, the first Friday in September, we get the next unemployment number. And then again, around mid-September, we'll get the next Fed meeting, where hopefully, right, we get a rate reduction. And that could be the, the one signal that we need to kind of lift the markets. In the meantime, we may get the Fed to come out and say, hey, what they're feeling is in the market and what they're feeling as in interest rates. Uh, now they're talking about maybe not just one rate reduction here in 2024, but potentially doing two or three still within 2024. So, you know, the big thing that I've learned through all of this rising inflation, um, rising interest rates, is the Fed doesn't even know what they're going to do 60 days from now. Uh, so certainly we're not going to try and time the market. Um, that's a, a gambling, uh, right? That's uh, trying to trace winners and losers and predict the future. I, I do not have a crystal ball. So what we're going to do is say, you know what? The market tends to be positive over the long term. We've got to pull back down the market. It's a good time to buy. And so we'll continue to do that with our clients' money. If you have any questions about your current portfolio or anything going on with you, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and we'll certainly address it. But that's all for now for our August Monthly Market Insights. Have a good rest of your summer.